Let's take a look at cylinders. What I've got in front of me is a Kubota two-cylinder N-block design, which means that everything's built into the one-piece cylinder block. Now this cylinder block particularly is made of a sand casting and after the casting was complete all the machining happened to true up the deck face, the front face for the front structure, the rear face for the rear structure and where the, the flywheel housing would mount. But what also happened was that the bore was polished and then cross hatched to allow for that oil retention of our piston rings. But what we can see is that there's no seam here. What that also means is that this is not really that serviceable. I mean, it's possible if Kubota made a sleeve, you'd be able to take this to a machine shop, get that cylinder bored out, and then press that sleeve in. But it isn't as serviceable as, let's say, using a serviceable or removable liner. When we take a look at removable liners, there's a couple different options. One of the common ones for smaller engines would be to use a dry fit liner. This dry fit liner is called a dry fit because it has no coolant that makes contact with it. It is serviceable, it's removable from the engine, and a new one can be installed if you noticed that the cylinder wall was getting scored or damaged, or even possibly cracked. Dry fit liners have no coolant that make contact, instead they fit into a tight machine surface or bore in the cylinder block. And so a common way to have these installed would be to actually super freeze these either in a deep freeze or with liquid nitrogen or with dry ice, get them quite cold and then you'd be able to drop them into the machined bore in the cylinder block. When you get them down there, there's this lip right on the top side of this liner. It needs to fit into the counter bore in that cylinder block. After that's done, we need to check liner protrusion to make sure that the liner is not sticking out too far and causing an interference with the cylinder head. Other than a dry fit liner, a more common one in our industry for our larger engines would be to use a wet liner. Now a wet liner has coolant that makes direct contact, circulated by the water pump, but it makes direct contact with the wall of the liner itself. This helps with cooling. To do that, we have a seal up on the top here, just below that flange again, cut into a counter bore into the cylinder block. But we have a, a rubber seal that would sit here and then also sit on this lower land here. Those rubber seals, band seals, would keep the coolant where it's supposed to be. The lower O-ring seals that'll ride down here are to keep the engine oil from being splashed and we don't want a cross-contamination between the coolant and the engine oil. Now, cross-contamination can happen at times, and often, because of age of the engine, what can happen is contamination, if the coolant system's not serviced properly, contamination can start to build up and the water pump circulates it around, and that contamination starts to erode at the cylinder. Now, another thing that can happen is simply irregular coolant flow can cause eddy currents or low pressure areas to form on the back side of the liner as coolant flow comes around the liner. And that as well creates this erosion. That erosion is actually pitting inside the cylinder wall and what will eventually happen is that it will weaken the wall. And heat of compression and detonation inside the combustion chamber will lead to a crack being formed. When that crack is formed, what eventually happens is either the coolant is going to leak in to the cylinder wall and we burn it during combustion, or combustion will leak out the cylinder wall and get into the coolant and overpressure the coolant system, or the crack will pr prolong or get longer or extend past the O-rings and actually cause coolant to mix in with the engine oil in the splash of the crankcase. So what we have then is an end block design with an integral cylinder, in other words, not replaceable, a dry fit style liner, or a wet liner. Now there's another liner out there, uh, books will refer back to for sure, and that would be anytime we see a air-cooled engine. So on an air-cooled engine, the liner itself will actually have air fins that go around it, and that's more commonly used in a modular cylinder block where the cylinder itself actually makes up 
So the replaceable liner makes up a portion of the cylinder block and it has air fins that go around it. Most of our commercial industry seems to use a liquid cooled engine. And so the ones that we've covered here, these three are the most common you're gonna see in industry.